chairman of the National Telecommunications Commission, Momo Conte, has assured the public that they will not ban social media, but rather advocate for its responsible use. A one-day workshop for civil rights activists and leaders in the Western Area Rural District on Business and Human Rights, organized by the Human Rights Commission, has ended at Waterloo. The Sierra Leone Psychiatric Hospital and the All-Adurian Children's Hospital that are sometimes faced with challenges to provide food for patients has received some support from the National Social Security and Insurance Trust, NASIT, in celebration of their 15th anniversary. And in sports, the Sierra Leone Volleyball Federation is set to host the Commonwealth Beach Volleyball Qualifiers for Africa with 19 counties expected to participate in the five-day encounter scheduled for late October this year. Those were the headlines and now for the news in detail with me, Amadoula Mganaba. A one-day workshop for civil rights activists and leaders in the Western Area Rural District on Business and Human Rights, organized by the Human Rights Commission, has ended at Waterloo. The workshop, according to the Commission, is part of their ongoing engagement across the country on raising awareness on rights issues in business. Andrew Bestman attended the workshop and he filed in this report. The Human Rights Commission of Sierra Leone has held a training workshop for civil society activists and stakeholders of the different communities in the Western Area Rural District on how to intervene on issues related with human rights business at the Western Area Rural District Council Conference Hall at Waterloo. Addressing the training opening ceremony, the head of unit Business and Human Rights Commission of Sierra Leone, Abdullah Yula Bangura, said the training is also geared towards building the capacity of the private sector and employ the participants to use the opportunity to the best of their knowledge. We are here today at the Waterloo Rural District to engage with CSOs and members of communities on issues of business and human rights. This is part of a series of training engagement the Human Rights Commission is conducting with these stakeholders at regional level to ensure that the people are aware about the relationship between business and human rights in their community and what kind of intervention that will be required of them when cases of human rights are being reported to them as community members and as a CSOs. The training is to equip them with the instances of human rights related to businesses and business related issues to human rights. Giving an overview of the training, the Assistant Human Rights Officer, Business and Human Rights Unit, Moses Masakoy, underscored the importance of the workshop on its legal concepts in relation to business human rights and encouraged participants to ensure that they follow the principles and concepts in executing their various functions on human rights related issues. Also, with the same say, the concepts of human rights People they ask why business by human rights, the case will be additional. How business, are you right to connect business? But I can only say, we talk about human rights for governance, no force. We talk about human rights for politics, no force. We talk about human rights for even sports, religion, everything about human rights, because I'm not someone in the day. So the question I can ask people is, why do we talk about human rights for business? Because who do they own business, not so much about business? Who do they control business, not so much about control business? If business benefits, not so much about the benefits. A participant of the organization, Fala Ensa Gema, who doubles as the vice chairman of the Western Area Human Rights Committee, commended the commission for the training, describing it as timely towards the rebranding of the commission. Two road with CC, the two road you go see and say it day, but I mean the people them according to the agreement we they for the two road, they mean for don't complete ten kilometers before then begin for collect the two. They not even complete the ten kilometers. I mean, you know, then just um, do some part, in fact, not just the tools and then pin at the places, then, then they collect the money. And so, waiting with the land I had today, now how government 
get, I mean, you know, a duty for protecting citizens them, and how businesses then get a responsibility for ad hire. The Human Rights Commission is an institution enacted by Parliament to address issues on human rights, especially the aggrieved. Andrew Bestman reporting. Chairman of the National Telecommunications Commission, Momo Conte, has assured the public that they will not ban social media, but rather advocate for it to be used responsibly. Mr. Conte's assurance came after some reports by some section of the media that government is planning to ban social media before the 2018 elections. Here is the report. Chairman of the National Telecommunications Commission, Momo Conte, has said they have no plans to ban social media in the country, contrary to reports going around. Speaking at the annual general meeting of the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists at the University of McKinney Hall in McKinney Township, Momo Conte said social media have immeasurable potential to unlock economic growth and opportunities that could drive national development. He said the benefits of social media cannot be measured and there is every need to tap on the many opportunities for the good of society which everyone is striving for. The freedom of speech is the foundation of a democratic society. Good journalistic practice is based on the public's right to have access to facts and opinions. We have no intention of banning social media, but please help us reduce the misuse of it. Momo Conte went further to commend journalists for what he described as their professional practice over the years, despite the many challenges they are faced with. He, however, appealed for more credible and objective reporting, especially at such a time when the country is preparing for elections. The media, as I see it, will be the driving force for our elections in 2018. But responsible reporting will make our leaders credible and our elections great. As a commission, we are currently working with the National Electoral Commission and have started collaborating with the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists and intend to collaborate with civil society and youth groups in Sierra Leone to allay the fears of investors and citizens alike. He assured journalists that they will collaborate with the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists and other stakeholders to monitor and address the many concerns and fears associated with the use of social media. Momo Conte ended by noting that defining the problem from different perspectives is the right part in providing a comprehensive and realistic solution to the threats of social media. This is a challenge. For all of us, the elections is important. We expect Sludge to be very objective in their reporting. We expect Sludge to make sure that whatever goes out on social media by journalists must be credible. In exchange, we'll do everything to collaborate with you. We've gone to the extent of even even establishing the Sierra Leone Internet Exchange Point, wherein most of your conversation will not be going out, but will be circled in Sierra Leone and will be seeing it at NATCO. So it will be very easy for me to know exactly where this person is, including the address and everything. Momo Conte's assurance came after several reports that government, through the National Telecommunications Commission, is planning to ban social media before the 2018 elections. For Star TV News, Amadou Lamranaba reporting. Italian's entertainment industry is growing despite the many challenges. Young entertainers are doing all they could to do good songs, videos and movies in the country. Ambassador Bash, Mohamed Basiru Sanusi is all set to give us some more updates on what's happening in the country's entertainment industry. Hello, Bash, and welcome to the news. What's happening? Many thanks to you, Amal Lamaraba, and to our viewers out there. And uh, if viewers pay key attention on the screen, this is uh, Abubakar Conte, known as Box. And uh, this is a wonderful friend called Rebot, but he's called uh, Bobby Wine from Uganda. And that's Yul Idochi from Nigeria. And Yul is an actor and also a writer. 
A quick up in the entertainment news for today. Abu Bakr, content known as Digibox, who is uh, the chief executive officer for Box Production, has informed this medium that is aspiring for the All People's Congress Regional Organizing Secretary for the Northwest region. It could be recalled that Box believes that this adventure will impact the lives and position him in a position of influence and making decisions. And uh, many have referred to him as the fixer. And uh, on uh, my far left here, you can see a photo of a Ugandan musician, and he's called Robert Sentamu, and uh, he's the current member of parliament from the Kayadondo in East Central Uganda. And likewise, Yul Edo Chidea. Yul is uh, the another governor state governorship, and is moving as a governor in a state called Anambra, and is standing under the party called Democratic People's Party. And you is doing extremely well. So it's very easy for Box because entertainers are said to be very influential people. And finally, for entertainment news for today, and the Lake Production and Rugged has informed us medium that Emerson Amido Bokari, that's the CEO for Sugar Entertainment, known as Emerson, the last man standing, and Abdul Razak Kanu Akman, that's the Mr. Vanity, Mr. O somebody, and Mohamed Kamara, known as Morris, are all set to perform at the Shaka Stevens Stadium on the 24th December in an event tag, the National Tangis Music Fest. Let's go in and watch top videos from these guys and we'll come back and wrap up entertainment news for today. <laughs> In my direction Love go Love potion Baby your love potion Don't they steal me attention yeah. Baby this a love potion If I like you You say for let me If I love you You say for love me No go sit on a corner with me Put your for back by it Every lips get something for say by you Only man then set them eyes on you You so fine, you find my baby boo The old city they say something by you Ooh. Excellent videos from our guys and those three performers Emerson, Ackman and Maurice will make it at the Shaka Stevens Stadium on the 24th including musicians from all sides and also the X Factors says the chief executive officer of Lake Production, Alaji K. Taroli. And as earlier, most entertainers are supporting Box ahead of uh, his ambition and aspiration to go in for the All People's Congress Regional Organizing Center. That's all for today and back to you, Amadou Lamranaba. Thanks very much, Mohamed Basiu Sanusi, for that entertainment news. It's always entertaining with you. Um, one of the foremost entertainment journalists in the country. And um, we've seen en people in the entertainment industry going into politics, and hopefully one of them will declare for the presidency. We're looking forward to that. You're still watching the National News Bulletin here on Star Television Network on Channel 21. The Salyon Psychiatric Hospital and the Ola Durin Children's Hospital that are sometimes faced with challenges to provide food for patients has received support from the National Social Security and Insurance Trust. The support, which includes food and non-food items, is part of the ongoing 15th anniversary celebration of the Trust. Waida Sisi Asmoan Shinao reports. As a way of complementing their 15 years anniversary celebration, the National Social Security and Insurance Trust, NACIT, has been engaging in humanitarian activities that attract stakeholders across the country. Some of the beneficiaries of their humanitarian gesture include the Sierra Leone Psychiatric Hospital Kisi Mental Facility and the Oladurin Children's Hospital Cottage Freetown. 
The celebration also included educative programs. We are four schools in Freetown. We are engaged in a quiz competition at the YWCA in Freetown. During the presentation of the assorted items at the Psychiatric Mental Hospital Kisi, the Director of Human Resource and Administration, Peter Kenner, said NACID has been operating in Sierra Leone for 15 years and they thought it fit that all Sierra Leoneans belonging to any institution is considered to be a member of NACID, adding that they decided as a team to demonstrate their solidarity to give back to the society. This year, Nancy they become 15 years, Doctor. And because we are 15 years, we're not adolescent now, we're not big man now. We decide to say, everybody in this country wants to work, man. It belongs to Nancy. We get for showcase, say, we are 15 years. We get for can't tell the public, say, now this will they do. Now this will not be able to do. Una self now go go tell you say. Una before go so una not go so. Now they roll with it. So we decide say. Let we also get out to the public. We people learn the we need we. It not gonna be much. We choose this uh, psychiatric hospital. We take children's hospital. Blind school in Kenema, Paul School for the Blind in Bo, and then uh, Bombali School for the Blind. We we'll do a similar donation. And we see the impact with the donation and they make on the communities and where we go. While receiving the donated items, the psychiatrist of the Kisi Mental Hospital, Dr. Abdul Jalo, expressed sincere gratitude to Nasit for their laudable gesture. He noted that the said donation is being considered to be huge since it took up office from Dr. Nahim. He disclosed that over 5 million people across the globe suffered from mental disorder and one of the causes he mentioned is the misuse of drugs by people. He went further to highlight some of the challenges the mental facility is suffering from. And one of these he noted is the lack of medicines, poor water facility, inadequate staffs, among others. Yes, and I know say this um, donation come about the letter we have the right to the DJ personally. So um, um, I'm very, very, very happy. We're very happy because because he see, he see the need for support within this hospital. This hospital for the past years now be the least with Salomon the thing but as you say Kissimental everybody say ah not Christmas is it. But um, as soon as soon as FC we get different people now we we may um, uh, not see any crisp power. So um, 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 we tell totally thank you for 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 um, uh, for wanna come. Then uh, and 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 then again I think say today now the right day for for wanna come because a week from now we we'll get what to call the World Mental Health Day, where the theme for this year now mental health in the workplace. We we um, um, uh, this day come about with with different. Because the the now the the WHO headquarters, the CC, the need for raise awareness in terms of mental health in the globe. The matron of the Oladurin Children's Hospital Cottage, Fatma Takabo, also expressed their sincere gratitude to Nasid for the donation. She reiterated on the need for government to improve the health sector in the country including the enrollment of specialists and medical equipment in health centers. So many challenges as you can see. The government has been trying and we too are trying to complement the efforts of the government. But yet we have a lot of challenges in terms of human resource, in terms of the equipment we use, in terms of structures, a whole lot. But especially so, Let's take on to space, thinking of Oladungin Hospital that was built years back 
for only the Furobe community. Now this hospital is serving the entire nation as a referral hospital for children. We receive over 4,000 patients every month since this year started. So with that increased caseload and the capacity of the hospital is just about 200 beds. A lot of constraints. The National Social Security and Insurance Trust NASIT's 15 years anniversary celebration was complemented yesterday on the 3rd of October 2017 by organizing a quiz competition among four schools, which included the Sierra Leone Grammar School, Muslim Brotherhood, the Halbert Academy, and the Prince of Wales. Albert Academy emerged as a winner of the quiz competition. Reporting for Star TV News, I am Waida Sisei. It's now time for some sporting news. Alison Takamara is all set to give us some updates. Thanks a lot, Sam Manaba. Um, hello, viewers. Locally, a number of things happening within the sports circle. One among them is the fact that the Sierra Leone Volleyball Federation is set to host the Commonwealth Beach Volleyball Qualifiers for Africa, with 19 countries expected to form part of the five day encounter opening late this October. Here's the report. Taking part in the FRVB World Championship held in Austria and facing the net against well financed countries does not only give Sierra Leone the loan opportunity to rub shoulders with envied names in the globe, but also offer the country the vantage view to learn from mistakes. Returning home with the zeal to excel, the Sierra Leone Volleyball Federation commenced grassroots training to attract 500 youngsters across the country. The move will also include training up to 20 coaches to actualize a new dream. Along the same vein, the Volleyball Federation is getting set to host 19 countries for the Commonwealth Games Beach Volleyball Qualifiers, scheduled for this October in Freetown. Intensive workouts are underway at the Volleyball Court National Stadium with Coach Suri Kamara directing actions. We the host the uh, Commonwealth Qualifiers for Africa, uh, with our 19 nations, uh, on the 25th to the 30th. Um, October this month. Uh, <laughs> now that I'm making the boys in the train effect, these are the four players who call for training. Uh, okay, we we'll go for end of for use two of them. We we'll get more time, we we'll get more two weeks, and we we'll get the correct two players that also play. Um, but now we can see how for correct all the mistakes then. At the end of the day, the player will be able to say he corrects all the mistakes then, and it pleases me in the association. Uh, then, then go to the this country to this competition. Uh, the middle edition, this is the very first time self for like Commonwealth um, include um, beach volleyball na the activity. Uh, and this time we'll be with all the 12 countries na Glasgow, um, Austria, um, Africa will get um, two slots, and uh, all the other continents will get two slots. People and go back and 12. It will be male and female. As I talk to you, Shelly, um, Mauritius, South Africa, Nigeria, Mozambique, all don't confirm for CAM. So if I check the mail, I think more country go don't confirm than CAM 1. The local side has two weeks to go on training to select a pair that will face rival Nigeria, South Africa, Mozambique, and many more among the lot. This is the first time the country is hosting such prestigious beach volleyball qualifiers. For Star TV Sport, Ali Kamara reporting. Welcome back. An international scene. Ryan Giggs insists Jose Mourinho has found the man to fill the void left by Paul Pogba. Manchester United record signing Paul Pogba is currently sidelined with a hamstring injury. Mourinho has failed to put a debt on the 98 million midfielder's return, but admitted he is set for an extended absence at the club deciding whether to operate on the problem. But United have maintained their blistering start to the campaign, even in his absence, sitting at the top of the Premier League on equal points after Man City. That's all we have for sport. Back to Ilan Baraba. We hope we'll spend more time and uh, more resources in supporting our athletes, um, especially those doing volleyball, playing volleyball, because it seems football is um, a setback in the county. Thanks for that supporting update Alison Takamara. Well, yes, that's all we have in our national news bulletin file for this hour. Many thanks for watching. I have been Amadou Lamwana. Keep watching Star TV. The weather forecast is coming up next.